Hey friends, welcome to a new project. Today we want to build our own Python sentiment analysis app using machine learning, actually using transformers from Hugging Faces and also build a front end on top of that with Streamlit. Sounds exciting? Now let's get into it. So, so far I have created the credentials.py file and in this credentials.py file I store my consumer key, consumer secret, access token and access token secret. So only four variables with these specific names. And I need them from my Twitter developer account, which can easily request if you go to developers.twitter.com and then you can go here and apply for an account and then you can get your personal credentials. I will not show you mine because these are mine alone, but of course you can also apply here and use your own ones. So after doing this, we also need a few additional libraries which is TweePy, Streamlit, Pandas, and Transformers. So let me actually go here and, and create a new file here. And I name this file here simply my uh, sentiment analyzer.py. Yes, I want to change it. And I can open it in Visual Studio Code. That's my editor of choice here. And this is the one I'm going to use. Let me close this here. And now let me actually make this a little bigger here. And let's write our code. Okay. So we need a few libraries, as I said, and I want to import TweePy, TweePy as TW. And of course you can use the abbreviation of your choice. And if you don't have TweePy installed, you need to run it with pip install TweePy first. Okay, so, and the same for all the other dependencies you might not have installed. You can use pip either directly from the command line if you have a global uh, variable for pip, if not, you need to go to your Python installation folder and to the scripts folder and then use pip from there to install the dependencies. So let me actually move this here and let's import as well, import streamlit, streamlit as st. And I also want to import then pandas. So import pandas as pd for our data frame object, which we're going to display in our app. And then I want also from transformers, transformers, I want to import here pipeline, pipeline. And finally, I want to uh, import my credentials. So I say from credentials, credentials, creden, oh, there's an end missing credentials. I want to import here my consumer key, consumer key, my consumer secret, my access token, and my access token secret. So those four, and these are also the ones you get directly from the Twitter um, developer account. So you get four uh, specific uh, keys, which are those four and tokens. And what I did, I simply in my credentials.py stored the, the values in those, in those specific, uh, in this case, variables. So I said in my credentials file, it's simply like consumer key is equal to, and then here I have some kind of key, which is inside here, right? Like that. And I will have the same for all the other four variables. And that's why I can import them here directly like that and use them. Next, I can set my authorization. So auth is equal to, and I say auth handler, auth handler is called. And this handler needs now my consumer key and my consumer secret. Then I can actually uh, set the access token running auth dot set access token access token, and here I need to give it the access token access token, and the access token secret. So those. And this is the way how we can use the four, uh, in this case, variables or keys which we get from the developer account in order to set the authorization correctly. And finally, we can create an API and call this is equal to tweepy.api. And here we simply need to specify our authorization. And then also we say wait on rate limit, limit is equal to true. This just means that uh, we don't, um, so we can't uh, query um, Twitter indefinitely. So there of course are limits uh, for the free API, but uh, we simply want to make sure that we don't overstretch it and we wait specifically so we can actually use our credentials uh, for several projects, right? And don't get uh, barred for any reason. So uh, that's it. 
And next we specify our classifier, classifier is equal to, and here we use the pipeline object from Hugging Faces from Transformers, pipeline. And we simply specify the specific pipeline which we're going to use, which is sentiment analysis. Analysis. So this means that we download the specific pipeline, which is pre-trained for us. So it's a kind of transfer learning, which we're going to do here. And we use it as a classifier. So this means we don't have to train our own machine learning model. We use instead one which is already trained. So that's it for the classifier. And by the way, if you have not used it before, the first time you need to download, of course, the model. And this might take a little bit, depending on uh, your internet connection, because I think the size of the model could be up to one gigabyte. So it's quite large, actually. But um, uh, I'm not sure, totally sure it's some time ago that I downloaded it. But um, just wanted to mention this here. Then next, we specify in our app that we have a title. So st.title. And the title of our app is simply sentiment sentiment analysis. Uh, analysis, like that. Next, we specify here also the markdown, so which is a kind of additional information, st.markdown. And then here we simply say this is a, let's say, real-time, well, let's call this sentiment analysis app actually, right? Let's call it maybe app. And here we say this is a real-time and then um, sentiment insights, okay, like that. Okay, so we're good to go. And next we, of course, you can write in longer text to give more explanation for people using your app. So we specify the title and then also a markdown, so additional information. And now we actually create the function, so called def, and I call this analyze. You can name this whatever you like, but I name mine analyze. And in this function, I create a form, so with st.form. So a streamlit form has a key, and this key can be anything, but I simply call it sentiment key, okay, like that. And then within the form, we actually want to have three things. At first, our search is equal to st.textInput. And here we specify, um, what should this display? Well, let's say, what are you searching? Next, we specify the number of tweets, number of tweets. So how many tweets do we want to return? Is equal to st dot, in this case, not a text, but a number input, number input. And we specify here um, how many tweets. And here we have an option to add additional parameters like 0, 50, and 10, which means the minimum amount is 0, the maximum amount is 50, and we start with a default value of 10. And finally, we need a submit button. So simply a button which allows us to submit our request to the Twitter API. So st.submit, it's called submit. Um, in this case, let's call it actually store in a variable. We say submit button, button is equal to, and I'll say this is equal to st.form submit button. And here we also have a label, let's call the label A is equal to, let's say, submit, okay? Submit. Okay, so we got this. And now we check whether the button is pressed with if submit button, button, spelled correctly. So what, would, what do you wanna do? Well, if the button is pressed, then this means now we have our tweets and, or not, not yet, we actually have the amount of tweets and we know what should we search for with our API. So as we, we now can say tweets is equal to tweepy.cursor, cursor object. And the cursor object needs the search, which is defined by api.search, search. Then next we need the keyword. We can query that with the queue. The queue, the keyword is the search, which we have stored in the verbal search. And then we specify a language, in this case, we're going to use English as a language. And then we say dot items to get the items from the cursor. And then how many items? Well, the items is defined by the number of tweets. So this now means we use now our API. We search for the search word here. And um, we search in English language. 
and we go or uh, get back the number of tweets which is stored in here by also an input from the user of our, in this case, sentiment app. Next, we specify the text from the tweets. We say um, tweet list, tweet list is equal to, and we use a list comprehension here and say i.text for i in tweets. That's the first one. Next, the text itself needs to be put into our pipeline object to classify it as positive or negative. So we say p is equal to, and again, a list comprehension, and I say i for i in classifier. And here we put in simply the tweet list. Tweet list. Okay, so we got this as well. And then of course, because the classifier itself returns not only the sentiment, but also some additional information, we need to strip that because we only want to have the sentiment. That is why I specify another variable here. You can name this whatever you like. I simply say it's Q. And then I say from the sentiment, uh, the ith element, I'd like to have actually what's inside the label from this dictionary. And here I say for I in range, and then length of P. So we got this. And then we can store this in a data frame. So we can say df is equal to pd.dataframe, just to display something in our app. And we say we list the zip of what we want. Well, we want to have the tweet list, tweet list. So actually the text of the tweet and also of course the sentiment. So we use Q in here. We zip that, we put it in a list and say for the columns, columns is equal to, and here we simply use uh, two names. Let's say this is our tweet. And the second one is our sentiment like that. Okay, so we got this, and finally, of course, we want to write this data frame, so we say st.writeDF. And that should be it. So let's actually go out here, and then call our if dunder name, dunder name is equal to, uh, in this case, dunder main. So when someone is actually calling or running the sentiment analysis of pi file, which we currently have open, then we want to execute directly the Anal analyze, analyze, here we go, this one. So that's it, let's save this here, and we should be good to go like that. So it could of course be a spelling mistake somewhere, but I think that should work. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's actually close this for now, and then let me go into a terminal here. Um, so open this. Uh, Okay, and now let's actually run this. Let's call sentiment, or let's call streamlit, sorry, streamlit run, and then sentiment, uh, sentiment analyzer.py. And then should be it, so let's run this. And now actually we should open localhost, that is true. Now it's opening the host, and we see our app, it is running, Let's just see credentials because I misspelled it. Okay, I thought so. There's a spelling mistake. Let's go inside and let's actually make this correct. Credentials, so there's no N in here. Credentials, that's fine. Let's save this, let's close this. Let's go back to our browser and let's actually always rerun this. And there's our app. Okay, so we're good to go. And we can see we got here our front end interface, so we got a title in here, we got the markdown comment, and then what are we searching for, and how many tweets do we want? 10 is the default. So let's say we are searching for Tesla, so go in Tesla here, like that, and uh, go, let's say, uh, 15 tweets, let's actually click submit, and let's run this, and let's see what the sentiment for Tesla is. So it's running, and here we go, and we got some positive and negative scores here, and also the tweet itself. So here, positive, something was amazing, amazing, uh, over $67,000 for Tesla 3, uh, and so on, this is a positive one, and another one, Tesla is the crypto, okay, this is a positive one, a negative one, a park Tesla 3, and so on, invasion on Apple TV, whatever, um, and negative, okay? But you see that it obviously works, we got a tweet, and we got the sentiment for this tweet, and we display it here within our app. So let's give it one more shot let's call let's call bitcoin 
as an example, because I guess there's a lot of uh, talk about Bitcoin, uh, maybe BTC, whatever kind of abbreviation we should use, but let's go with Bitcoin and let's actually submit this and let's just see what the sentiment for Bitcoin is. So again, we are querying the API, we're using the, um, in this case, our classifier, and then we get a lot of negative sentiment, at least the last ones which we can see here, which is negative for Bitcoin. So maybe uh, for now we should retreat a little bit um, uh, in regarding uh, the Bitcoin itself. Okay, so um, this is of course uh, just an example. Uh, you can try this out yourself. Uh, this is by no means any kind of uh, investment advice or something like that. It was all about the app itself. And I just want to encourage you, maybe you can create this app yourself, try this out, and also then maybe query different kinds of search parameters you are interested in, okay? So that's it for this little project. So I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed it too. Hopefully you learned something. And if you liked it, then please give me a thumbs up. And also please subscribe to the channel because of more people are subscribing to the channel and the channel is growing, then of course I will create some more videos like that or also maybe on um, Power BI, also in Tableau or any other kind of, uh, well, projects you're interested in. Just let me know and subscribe. So please stay safe, take care and hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.